Welcome to Easy Examples. Learn data analysis visually. Today, through a small example, we studied the two-sample t-test and the uh, ANOVA analysis of variance. We put these two analysis methods in a single lecture because they are both used for evaluating the effectiveness of certain treatments. Introducing them together makes it easy for understanding the commonalities and differences between the two methods. Here is an example question. By describing this example question, we know what kind of problem the two methods can solve. In our example, a survey is conducted to test how the education level influences the salary. In the survey, the questionnaire is very simple. It only includes two questions. What is your salary? What is your education level? For the education level, People can choose bachelor or master. Suppose that there are 2,000 respondents for this survey. These 2,000 respondents include 1,380 bachelors and 620 masters. In the histogram below, we show the distribution of salaries. The color shows the number of respondents with different degrees at each salary level. Using data analysis method, we need to answer if the master's degree increases salary. The master degree here is actually our treatment. So, in other words, the question is whether the treatment of master's degree is effective in increasing the salary. We first use the two-sample t-test to analyze the survey results. Here, we use x to represent the salary of each respondent and uh, use the superscript b and uh, m to label the groups of bachelors and masters. The histograms here show the distributions of salaries for each group. We use x bar and uh, the s square to represent the average and uh, the variance of the sample. We can see that the average of master's salary is higher than the bachelor's. However, is this difference large enough for us to say with confidence that the masters have higher salaries than the bachelor's? This is what two sample details is trying to answer. In the two sample t test, we calculate the t-value based on the difference of the averages of the two groups and uh, the variance of each group. If we make the hypothesis of the two groups have the same salary, then the t-value should be distributed around zero following a t-distribution as shown in the figure. If the t-value is too far from zero, then we reject the hypothesis. This hypothesis of the two groups have the same salary is a null hypothesis in our t-test. Suppose that we require a confidence level of 95%, then we can have the confidence interval as shown in the figure. If our t-value is beyond this confidence interval, then we reject the hypothesis of the two groups have the same salary. In our example, the t-value is more than 20. From the figure, we can see that it is uh, way beyond the upper bound of the confidence interval, so we reject our hypothesis. In other words, we conclude that the salaries of masters are higher than the salaries of bachelors with 95% of confidence level. Another very important value we care is the p-value. The p-value is the probability of making type 1 error. The type 1 error is the error that you reject a hypothesis that is actually true. In our example, if we conclude that the salaries of masters are higher than the salaries of bachelors, but they are actually equal, we make a type 1 error. The smaller p-value indicates a smaller chance of making type 1 error. And so, 
it shows a more significant difference between the groups. Usually, when the p-value is less than 1%, we say that it is a significant difference. In our example, it is super small, so difference is very significant. Now, let's have a look at ANOVA, the analysis of variance. From the name, we can see that it has something to do with variances. So, we start by having a quick look at uh, how variances can reveal the effectiveness of a treatment. First, we look at uh, this histogram, which has uh, two groups of the respondents together. By calculation, we can solve the variance of the salary equal to 120 million. However, when we divide the two groups and calculate the variance for each group, we find the variance reduced to 100 million for each group. We see the variance has changed after dividing the sample data into different groups. Why this is happening? This actually reveals the logic of ANOVA. For our example, the reason of the changing variance can be explained as the difference of education levels as to the variance of the salaries. And this can be interpreted as an evidence of the treatment of master's degree increases salary. Similar as the two sample t-test, the ANOVA method is trying to investigate if the change of the variance is high enough to draw the conclusion given a certain confidence level. Now we first write down the variances and then in order to make them comparable we multiply the variances with the degree of freedoms. The degree of freedoms are determined by the number of respondents. As demonstrated in the previous slide, we know that the scaled variance of the total respondent is larger than the sum of the scaled in-group variances. If the left-hand side and the right-hand side are equal, the treatment has no effect. For our convenience, we denote the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the inequation as SS total and SS area. SS here represent the sum of squares. The difference between SS total and SS error is denoted as SS treatment. Using SS error and SS treatment, we can compute the MS error and MS treatment. The MS here represent the mean square. The MS error indicates the average in-group variance, and uh, the MS treatment indicates the increment of uh, variance incurred by the treatment. According to the theory of ANOVA, we say that when the ratio of MS treatment and MS error is higher, the treatment is more effective. Similar to the two sample t test, in ANOVA, we have the f value from the ratio of MS treatment and uh, MS error. If the hypothesis of the two groups have the same salary is true, then the f value should follow the f distribution. The PDF of the f distribution for our example is shown as in the figure, and the dashed line shows a critical value for the 95% confidence level. If the F value is greater than the critical value, we say the value of the MS treatment is significantly large comparing to MS error. And so we conclude that the treatment is effective with the confidence level of 95%. In our example, the F value is more than 400, which is way larger than the critical value. So we conclude that with the 95% confidence level, the masters have higher salaries than the bachelors.
In most analysis software, when you run ANOVA, you usually get the table as shown here in the result. The table has all the information that has been introduced in previous slides, including the sum of squares, degree of freedoms, mean squares, f value, and p value. The most important value in this table is the p value. As introduced before, the smaller p value means a more significant effectiveness for the treatment. It should be noticed that the p-value we obtained from ANOVA is equal to the p-value we have in the two-sample t-test, which evidenced that using both methods, we have the same probability of making type 1 error. Actually, when there are only two groups, the two-sample t-test and the ANOVA always generate the same result given the same confidence level. Now, let's have a look at what happens when there are more than two groups. Let's suppose that there are three groups for our example, bachelors, masters, and PhDs. Using the two-sample t-test, the only thing we can do is to compare each pair of groups. So here, we need to make three comparisons. Because the type 1 error happens when there is type 1 error in any of the comparisons, the probability of making type 1 error is the sum of the p-values for all the comparisons. Using ANOVA, we first calculate the variance of each group and the variance of the total respondent. From the variance of the total respondent, we calculate the SS total. From the variance of each group, we calculate the SS error. Then, by calculating the difference between the SS total and the SS error, we get the SS treatment. From SS error and SS treatment, we can get MS error and MS treatment. The ratio of uh, MS treatment and MS error computes the F value. Finally, we obtain the P value from the F value. Here, we can see that using ANOVA, we only generate a single p-value. Because the p-value generated in ANOVA is lower than the p-value generated in the two-sample t-test, we can conclude that the ANOVA generates a more confident result when there are more than two groups. So, when there are more than two groups to test the effectiveness of a treatment, ANOVA is usually a better method comparing to the two-sample t-test. At the end, we wrap up by summarizing the commonalities and the differences of the two methods. The commonalities is obvious because both methods are designed for analyzing the effectiveness of a treatment. The difference is that the ANOVA is applicable when there are any number of groups, while the two-sample t-test can be only used for the case when there are two groups. When there are only two groups, because the two-sample t-test compares the averages of the two groups, it generates more intuitive result comparing to ANOVA. So usually, when there are two groups, Two-sample t-test is a better choice, and uh, when there are more than two groups, ANOVA is a better choice. Thank you for watching Easy Examples. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave your comments or contact me from the email in the bottom of the slide. Thank you again.